the ocean. As beautiful as it is deadly and destructive. Also full of life, full of opportunity. My family's been fishing for 12 generations. Join us today as we go back to look at New England fishermen. Ah, oh, yeah, now that's a job. Fresh sea air, working outside. That's how a real New England man makes a living. Well, maybe that's something to think about, Peter. Peter Griffin was right. And New England's been known for fishing forever. In fact, New England fishermen, through hard work, independent means, and financial reward, form the economy. The challenges of the early fishing industry made it a dangerous occupation that required lots of effort. Fishing was different back then. They didn't have the technologies we have, like computers, charts, sanding machines, or engines. All they really had was a boat, some hooks, and the know-how to bring in the big ones. Well then what's so hard about it? The ocean kills. So many people row out one morning, never to come back. Others go overboard, or get caught in the hooks and ropes. The ocean has claimed so many lives. But hey, it's not all bad. The fishermen were catching so many fish, they were rolling in dough. All the wharves were lined with codfish drying out and all the fishermen's pockets were lined with cash. They thrived from what the ocean had to offer. John Smith, captain of the Mayflower, returned to England with 47,000 codfish in the ship's hull. He and the pilgrims traveled to this alleged Cape Cod to catch the fortune that swam beneath the water. Although John made out fine, most of the pilgrims died that first winter because they weren't equipped for fishing or survival over there. Despite the pilgrims' failure, other people were doing very well fishing at the Grand Banks. Basque fishermen had been fishing at the Grand Banks since before Columbus came. Later, British ships fished the Grand Banks. Captain George Weymouth said, quote, Huge, plentiful cod. Some they measured to be about five feet, and others three feet. Cod were plentiful. In the year 1640, Massachusetts traded 300,000 cod. And that was only one type of fish. They also traded lots of whales, herring, halibut, hake, bass, sturgeon, and mackerel. It was almost as if there was too many fish in the water. And what a job to have, too. Being out on the water, being your own boss, doing what you want to do, just trying to make a living and hopefully make a killing. Everything was great for New England fishermen. Well, how did they catch the fish? Men in large boats would go out and they would deploy smaller boats called dinghies. And from these boats, men would handline for fish. A handline is just hook and a lot of string. It's something to wrap it around generally that you just drop down into the water. Whales were caught in a different fashion. Men would go out in the big boats and deploy the dories and then they would harpoon all the whales. Notice in the background, there's land. That's because most whale fishing was done inland in the early days of whaling. They'd kill beached whales and hunt for whales near the shoreline, but eventually the inland population of whales died off and they had to go out to sea to hunt for whales. Some whalers even went around Cape Horn to find whales. Other population of fish started to die too, like sturgeon and cod. A codfish can lay 9 million eggs, but only a few of which will be born. The effects of overfishing are still seen today. So what is fishing like today? Well, we have all the technologies we could want to help us, which certainly helps. But all the same values that were present back then are still present today. Fishing is my family. It's my dad. 
my uncle, my great-great-uncle, my great-grandfather, my other great-grandfather, my grandmother's paintings. Remember all those pictures of fishermen from the beginning? Well, those are all family members too. Twelve generations. From the day you're born to the day you die, you're on the water. And in my opinion, a fisherman will go throughout his days with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the way I envision it. And the way I envision it is being able to live without oppression and being able to pursue a dream. And like I said in the beginning, New England fishermen, through hard work, independent means, and financial reward form the New England economy. Well, that is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As a fisherman, you get to be your own boss. You get to spend a lot of time out on the water doing what you want to do to make a living. To make pretty good money, in fact. And it's just all part of the American dream. The sea. People have lived off the sea forever. And they will continue to do so. Till the end of time. <laughs>